What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down Juju Smith-Schuster's route running ability. We're going to be talking about a couple routes that he runs, how these guys, how you can use some of these releases, some of these moves at the top of the route, and some of this technique to help you guys get some separation. All right, and guys, if you're a receiver and you want me to take a look at your film, you want me to break down your route running just like this, we can look over drill film, game film, or just film of you running routes in general. Check out that link in the description. Become a member on my site where you get access to be a private email address where you could send me film, and also you get access to our advanced break breakdowns of defensive coverages four new every week 100 plus breakdowns already preloaded nobody really uploads content like that you can't find that content anywhere else hope to get you guys signed up on that soon let's get started so first thing here off the line, we're going to be looking at this dive inside release. So just this dive release, two steps right across this DB's face, trying to sell like I'm trying to cross his face, get across the field, diving inside to get him to move those hips. Then I break off and restack. So let's watch it full speed one more time. So it goes one, two, gets the DB to jump off platform, and then I restack and come right over the top. So now the thing about this, the thing about this release here is there comes a point where this DB has to turn and run, right? And then if he's in man coverage here, right, he's obviously, you know, there's safety help over the top, right? So I would be really playing the fade as well you got safety up over the middle i'm not going to be trying to force him so much to the outside so we can kind of structure my release to, to, to like my knowledge of that, right? So we're going to try to get him to commit his hips and try to drift to the inside. So these first two steps out the line have got to be fast and we really got to make sure we cross his face and I got to commit my shoulders to the inside, right? So you see how he explodes off, just one, two. And now what that does to that DB is he's going to be shuffling outside. He's going to commit those hips and run. And now look at all the space I just opened up for myself. Essentially what this is is like a diamond release, now, I only like that diamond release on a slant because it takes a little bit too long, right? It's a full three steps. But this dive inside release is only two steps. So you just come off, you come with your back leg and you're coming straight across your body. One, two, you catch yourself on that inside leg, you're being very sudden because you see how we gotta be fast off of this thing or it doesn't work. If we're not fast and I'm not putting my foot in the ground sudden, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna get a reaction out of this DB. If I try to come off and I'm just choppy with these two steps, if it's just a quick one, two, he's not gonna commit his hips, he's just gonna shuffle with us, he's not gonna get a react we're not going to get a reaction out of him how we get a reaction out of him is by bursting off fast going one two putting your foot in the ground and then bursting back up field right and he does a great job of bursting back up fast and pushing vertical right so now that db's chasing him on that hip he breaks that thing off on third outside that makes this catch over the top great job here by juju getting separation on this release let's watch it full speed one more time so just one two get him to move off that platform get back over the top great route so now we're going to be looking at this kind of corner post concept here or maybe just is going to stay this post a little bit to the outside but he's going to be doing it for three steps so we're going to be here Safety is going to be manned up on him. He's walking down. So when we make this break to the to the corner here, right? So he's going to be breaking. He's going to fully commit his shoulders and fully commit his hips, right? So now if I fully commit my shoulders and my hips, that's where that DB's looking, right? He's watching those hips, right? Everybody it always says, well, you got to watch those hips, watch those hips, watch those hips. Day one stuff for a DB. Now, when we turn my hips and we fully commit my hips and I'm able to cut and change direction on a dime, that's the kind of thing that will get you separation, right? If you're drifting with this is right arm, and you start to drift your shoulders like upfield, like maybe you like like you're giving it away that you're running a post. You're leaning to the outside. Your hips are kind of halfway in, halfway out. That's not going to get you space. What will get you space? Committing those hips, committing those shoulders, and then just popping that foot in the ground very suddenly. Right. The only way I'm able to change direction while committing full speed is by being sudden with my feet. Just like how if I'm running a curl, I'm running a comeback. I can only run full speed and drop my hips violently to get out of the break. Right. So same thing when I'm making a speed cut. If I fully commit my hips and run. See, it's easy to round a break like this. It's easy to, like I said, open up your hips and open up your shoulders and then be very soft with that plant leg and let this DB react. But when I fully commit and I want to get right back to this 45, I got to be sudden. I got to pop my feet off in the ground. It's got to be explosive. And I got to really make sure that I rip out and pump my arms so I can continue to get space from this guy. You want to continue. All the third phase of the route is the acceleration is just continuing to get space, creating that – um Winning that race, that's what I should say. All it is that in thir third phase is winning that race against that DB. That's a great job here by Juju. And again, let's watch this thing full speed one more time. So he's kind of angling this thing to the outside. One, two, three. Break that thing off very sudden, then burst back up field. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at a speed out from um, 
We're going to be looking at a speed up of Juju. I believe this is his pro day. Not 100% sure. I would assume it's his pro day. But um, we're going to be talking about how he's able to hit this thing fast, how he's not able to drag, and how he's, again, able to just pop his foot in the grass. Now, let's watch a full speed, then we'll break this thing down. So he's coming up here off his third inside, breaks this thing off, gets pretty flat on that break, then makes this catch. Now, one thing I want to point out is he does slow down a little bit into this break, and I think that's something that, you know, a lot a lot of receivers do, and especially when you got to get flat on like a 90-degree cut, it's very easy to want to do that, right? But you watch like elite route runners, like for example, Devontae Adams, you watch a Julio Jones type, you watch um, like a Keenan Allen type, right? They're able to go full speed, and then on a dime, they cut, or they break down, they drop their hips, whatever it is, like Tyree Kill type, he's so fast, and he never loses that speed, and he's able to change direction so quick because of how explosive he is with his hips, and um, just his overall just ability to drop his hips and get out of a break fast, so that's something that we're going to talk about here, so you see when he pushes up, he's got great speed off the ball, but you see how he starts to kind of slow down his steps, you see, watch his strides when he gets to about the 35-yard line, you see how they start getting a little bit shorter and choppy now here's the thing if i'm a db and i'm gonna backpedal right and and the thing about this too you got to remember that juju this is when he was not even in the league yet right this is when he's just getting better he's trying to improve he's a college receiver trying to get better for the league obviously he's a great receiver i'm just saying that this is something that a high school guy can learn from and even a college guy youth guy can learn from in terms of your route when you're a db backpedaling and you're looking for any kind of indicator, right? Because I'm a DB and – or no, like like if I were a DB and I'm, I don't know the play. That's why DB is such a hard position to play. You don't know the dang play, so you're playing a guessing game 24-7, right? That's why it's probably the second hardest position on the field. And when you're dropping, you're looking for any kind of indicator, any kind of indication that a break's going to happen, right? When I first got started coaching – um, they threw me out. I was coaching safeties, right? And I had no idea what I was doing. But I would tell the safeties, hey, listen, if you start to see those receivers start to pick their number up, fling their arms out, or they start to have fast hands, like abnormally fast hands, or they start to chop their feet, that's expect a break, you know? And then some receivers will think like, oh, okay, well, I could reverse that. And yes, you can and um, do that. And then like on a double move, right? But more often than not, they would break on that ball and they'd be so fast on that break because it was just like, Listen, that's, it's just an indicator, right? You're looking for a little indication from a receiver. So that's something that we need to be able to pay attention to as a receiver. I don't want to give an indicator. And by chopping your steps down here and letting your steps get a li- steps a little bit choppy is just a thing for this DB. DB's in a backpedal. Okay, he starts to see yourself slow down. He starts to feel your speed slow down. I'm going to go try to make a break on this ball, right? Now, this is a pretty good job here by Juju being sudden with this break. And trying to really get flat on this thing, right? And that probably has a little bit to do with why he started cutting down his steps, right? Why you start getting choppy is because you're a little bit more comfortable making that break and getting flat, which is, which is true. It's, it's an easy thing to do. And a lot of people do that. It's not like it's only his problem or it's only your problem if you have this same problem. It's a very common thing to want to slow down right before you make a speed cut, right? But if we're able to pop my foot off, and I guarantee you he'd be admitting the same thing too. If we're able to pop my foot off and just be sudden, as I'm hitting that thing in full speed and just cut on a dime, that's why you see guys like Julio Jones are so good at running routes because they could go full speed and just cut. And now he's able to get flat right now because he kind of slowed himself down. He's able to snap that head around. And you see when he snaps that head around here, snaps his head around, that's what gets his hips committed. And that's what gets him flat right back down this line. A lot of people will come off any kind of cut like this and they round it out with their head down and their hips are slow around. You want to snap that head around violent because this core quarterback should be letting go of this ball you should not see the quarterback throw this ball so if you see him throw the ball then your quarterback's late right and you know you're gonna have to probably come back to that ball right so now this quarterback was a little late as well here because this ball should be about halfway there rather than just now leaving his hand but when we snap my head around and i come out of this thing when, when I snap my head around and come out of this thing fast, I really got to make sure I drive my arms, I run out, I accelerate out, and then I make this play, okay? That's a pretty good job by Juju getting flat and snapping his head around. The same thing, maybe would like to eliminate those choppy, like not choppy steps, but kind of slowing his stride down, cutting his stride down right before the break. Let's watch this thing full speed one more time. So he's coming off here, break, then accelerate out. It's a great job getting his head around and speed off the ball, okay? I hope that gave you guys some value. I hope you kind of learned a little bit about more so like just what you need to do to be able to come up into a speed cut, how you can really 
execute your plan off the line with this dive release and then a way you can set up a post break or a corner post okay and again guys if you have any questions please leave those in the comments or if you have any suggestions on who you'd like to see me break down next i'd really appreciate that if you want me to take a look at your film check out that link in the description i'll see you guys next time